What's going on guys? Jacob Orth back here with another video of Jacob's Life in Vegas. Coming to you guys today, we have an article to talk about today. And it's going to be related to taxes. Not here in Nevada, but our neighbors next door in California. And it absolutely could affect, and you know what? It will affect Nevada if this becomes a reality. So go ahead, hit the thumbs up button if you like to keep more of your money and you generally prefer to pay less of it in taxes. I'm coming to you guys from the southwest part of town. This is a spot, this um, park I'm at, this is a badass park, okay? There's a sports complex or a sports park, whatever the official name of, it, name of it is. I think it's James Regional Sports Complex or James Regional Sports Park. Um, this place is new and I actually was driving by and trying to find a spot for a video. And um, I remember driving down the road here years ago when they had first started working on this. And I thought it was gonna be a bunch of homes built, but no, this is a sports park. And I haven't said it's the first time I've ever been to this park now. You guys maybe see the playground, the grass area behind me, there's a splash pad. There's gotta be, there's, look at all these soccer fields they have over here. Um, so I see number five and six. So maybe it's just on this side. And it looks like there's, I don't know, what, four more? If you look down that way, there's so many just soccer fields and just so much open space over. This is like the whole block here. It's on um, Warm Springs is the road right over there in the southwest part of town. I, I, was, I, was, gonna, I was gonna say way out southwest. I'm like, yeah, it's not really that far. I've just never been here before to this, to this complex. So I guess way out southwest would be like, you know, Mountain's Edge or something. So this is a beautiful place. It's really cool. But what's not cool is what is being proposed in California right now by, um, uh, it's a bill that's going through the, um, you know, California legislature right now. And this is an article I got from the San Francisco Chronicle. And the article starts off with a picture, shows two gentlemen in the picture. This is Assemblyman Miguel Santiago, uh, Democrat from Los Angeles, and um, State Senator Scott Weiner, Democrat from San Francisco, are co-authors of this bill that would raise California's top personal income tax rate. Now remember, California's personal income tax rate is already 13.3%. This bill would raise it to 16.8%. <laughs> it's already the highest in the country and this bill would actually raise it another 3.5%. Now, the big kicker for this is that this tax would be retroactive to January 1st. So they would go back and actually tax people on this, uh, which that's the ultimate kicker. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's awful. I just don't know how else to put it. So we're gonna go through this bill here, and it's actually a pretty short read if you just read it online yourself. Uh, but man, there are just so many lines of just political stupidity in this. It is just such gold if you just wanna laugh about how stupid some things are, particularly in California. So. Uh, to take effect this year, this bill would need to be approved by two-thirds of the legislature before they adjourn August 31st. So this is just recent news coming out. So by the end of this month, they would have to have this all figured out if it's going to go into effect. AB 1253 would add a surcharge of 1% to income, joint or single, between roughly 1 million and 2 million, 3% on income between 2 million and 5 million, and 3.5% on income greater than 5 million, bringing the TAP talks the top tax rate to 16.8 percent. This this is the first part of just laughable, just BS when you hear when you read this article. If the bill is approved, the revenue would go into the general fund and not be earmarked for anything specific. <laughs> it's like they're gonna take all this money throw in the general fund and just use it for whatever they want. So you can pretty much guarantee this money's gonna get flushed down the toilet like so much other money in California. Oh my gosh. It says, however, this is, this is a great quote, I love this one. There is a wide spectrum of incredibly pressing needs for the state at this time, such as affordable housing, the homeless, child care and education, said Assemblyman David Chu, Democrat San Francisco. Chu is one of the bill's co-authors. That is great, right? All the typical things you hear come out of politicians' mouths. Where the money's supposed to go, those that are most in need, it's gonna help. It's gonna help the children. We're gonna take care of the homeless, even though your homeless situation has gotten worse over the years. You keep throwing money at it and you can't figure out how to fix it. But that's where this money is supposed to go, right? That's where they say it's gonna go, but it's gonna go to the general fund and who knows where it's gonna go from there. The bill is backed by a coalition of labor unions representing public sector employees and quote unquote, it says progressive nonprofits and equity organizations. Maybe they're gonna get some of that money. Who knows? 
Critics say the state is already overly reliant on a small number of wealthy residents, <laughs> you think? <laughs> and should not increase its dependence on them, nor should it encourage them to take their incomes and businesses out of state, especially at a time when work from a home appears, uh, work from anywhere appears more feasible. Absolutely, I'm glad there's someone who's rational and someone presenting a good argument for why this is a horrible idea for your local economy there, for your state economy. So that was one counter argument to it. Now listen to these numbers. Listen to these numbers of how much money, how much of the taxes get paid by such a small percent of people in California. In 2017, only half of 1% of people who filed a tax return had 1 million or more in adjusted gross income. So half of 1%. But that half of 1% accounted for 40% of all taxes paid. 40% of all the taxes paid came from half of 1%. Uh, that's according to the latest franchise tax board data. The top 3.6% of filers in California, those making $300,000 or more a year in California, they accounted for 62.3% of all state taxes paid. So now the article follows up with another intelligent quote from someone who can actually see why this is a bad idea. Listen to this. California's t status as a high tax state already has resulted in business flight and many lost jobs, and this bill would only make things worse, Robert Gutierrez, president of the California Taxpayers Association said. The bill would bring the combined state and federal tax rate for California's top earners to 53.8%, over half of your money gone to taxes. And this is another funny part too. With the federal deduction for state and local taxes capped at $10,000, they would not be able to deduct the new taxes from their federal returns. Ouch. I remember when the SALT, uh, when they changed that a few years ago, and like in California, some of these high tax states were freaking out and trying to figure out what they could do and ways to get around. It's like, gee, you loved high taxes then, you know, then they didn't, or they used to love high tax and they freaked out about the uh, change for the $10,000 deduction, now they're just going back to high taxes again. Uh, a retroactive tax is especially egregious, perfect way to put it. The association spokesman David Klein said, everyone who has lived in California for more than half the year would be legally liable for the tax. Oh my gosh. And this next quote I'm gonna give you, this is. This is quite possibly one of my favorite ones. This, this close, the way this article closes is just perfect. It is absolutely perfect California mentality, perfect huge government mentality, and this is great. Again, for Mr. Chi, who's the Democrat from San Francisco, is one of the co-authors of this bill. Listen to this. California is the fifth largest economy in the world, Chi said. People who want to live and do business here will continue to live and do business here. A poll conducted for the coalition in June 2020 by David uh, Binders and Associates showed that 70% of California uh, voters supported a tax on millionaires. We have taxed the wealthy individuals before, and we have not seen a mass excess of wealthy people, Chiu said. Oh my gosh, this is great because so many people come to Nevada and to other states from California because they're sick, sick of getting taxed to death. And this one is going to be targeting the small group of really wealthy people they have in California compared, you know, relatively speaking to the general population there that already pay most of the taxes in the state. So what are you going to do when you encourage those people to leave and encourage them to come to a place like Nevada where we have no state income tax or Texas or Florida or even Arizona, Idaho, a place that has a lower state income tax in California. I mean, you're just encouraging them to leave. And when I see these comments, I see these quotes from you know the politicians here it is just comical and they love to say we are the fifth largest economy in the world yet you have rampant homelessness yet your money goes who knows where yet you have so much more debt than other states it's not even funny so what i find most fascinating is the word i'll use so when it comes to these quotes they get from you know the politicians that the people of california the majority of californians have elected is you know you get that ending line of you know they think that people are going to live in california uh, you know, they say no matter what, just just complete arrogance and, you know, just completely blind to reality to think that things like this just don't affect you, right? You, you're just going to take more of people's money via taxes and they're just going to be like, oh, oh I, guess, I guess I just lose more of my money. Some people are going to stay. Some will, some will deal with it. Some will put up with it, but you're going to have people leaving. You know how I know? Because you already have so many people leaving. Like the only way you could say a statement like that and actually believe it is either one of two ways. Either one, 
you're completely and utterly economically clueless. You never notice that single article or all the videos here on YouTube talking about how many people are leaving California, all the videos of people leaving California, people who start channels who left California and now help other people who want to leave California and get away from taxes and get away from high taxes, get away from government overreach. Like you're either completely blind to that. Okay, I did a, a video just in the last couple of years about the cost of getting a U-Haul rental truck to leave San Francisco or San Jose to leave California to go another state and how much it costs to go from another state into California. Where it's costing you a thousand, two thousand plus dollars to get a rental truck to leave California because so many people are leaving, the demand is high. Right, we're just talking basic supply and demand here. Like California government tries to escape that. They try to get around supply and demand, but it exists. Or you're going into California, you can get trucks for like, you know, hundred something bucks because there's so many more people leaving to go to other states than there are leaving other states to go to California. So you're either completely economically clueless or you're just flat out lying. Another part about this article or about this bill and the way this all plays out and all the rhetoric you hear about this is so comical. And it's sad that most people aren't gonna look into this and most people aren't gonna even like, you know, have the thought to go and do any research on this. But when you see the part about saying, right, we have all these pressing needs right now in the state of California. We need, you know, we need this money to go to education. We need this money to go to homeless. We need this money to go to affordable housing. All these things say, we need this money right now. Like, we, we need this money. This, you know, like it's, they add the emphasis that it's an emergency to get this money. So you would think that like they just introduced this bill now as an emergency response to what has been going on with the pandemic. No. No, 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 no. If you look at the history of this bill, it dates all the way back to February 2019. This is about a year and a half old when this first came about. Then it was canceled in June of 2019, and now it suddenly comes back to life in July 2020. So you already wanted to do this over about a year and a half ago. Over a year ago, you already wanted to take more money. You wanted to raise taxes a year ago when the economy was doing much better than it is right now. So where was all the money supposed to go back then? If things were going well then, there was no dire emergency going on then. Where was all the money, you're, all the extra money you're going to take then? So now you're just using the situation we're, in, we're in currently in as an excuse to try to push this through to tax people more. And this is really just common in California. This is commonly part of the culture in California, the larger culture. There's a lot of people in California who don't like this stuff, obviously, and that's why some of them leave. Um, you know, some of them leave and go somewhere else. So. But part of the problem in California is that is the dominant culture is high taxes. People love high taxes and the majority of voters vote for it. Like they just vote for it again and again and again. They just keep falling for it. Every time there's some tax increase that's supposed to go somewhere, they'll usually vote for it. They, they want the higher taxes because it's supposed to solve this problem. It's supposed to fix the roads. It's supposed to fix health care. It's supposed to pay for this. And yet, where does the money go? It's amazing how many people don't stop and ask that question. Where does the money go? Why should, we give, why should we tax more money, take more money from people, when we can just look at the money we have now and see where that's going? But they don't do that. What they do in California is they penalize the high income earners. You penalize your most economically successful people is what you do. So when you're penalizing people who are some of your best economic, uh, that the, make the biggest contribution to your economy, you hurt your economy. That's what you do. So California, they can keep doing, they, they'll keep doing this for a while. They'll keep doing this until maybe they learn their lesson one day, who knows? But I mean, people just keep leaving. That's what happens. They keep leaving and leaving and leaving and going to other places. And that's the trend. That's the pattern. I mean, many, many years ago, decades ago, California was like the place where people were jealous that you lived there. Now, so many people are just leaving that state. They're saying, bye, see you later. I'm not dealing with this anymore. Because you're going to keep punishing people for being success successful. You can't expect them to stay around for a really long time. So unfortunately, though, that is the culture. That is the dominant culture in California. And people vote for it. People accept it. They demonize people who make a high income. They demonize wealthy people a lot of them do not everyone but that is part of the dominant culture in california and you know some of these people they're going to get what they voted for all these a lot of the high income earners the hollywood celebrities right who say they love these things like high taxes and they want to they want all these big programs they can fund well you know you make millions of dollars you're worth millions of dollars you can pay for it you can lead the way and fund it you can show everyone else how much you love paying taxes to the government on a final note the reason stuff like this passes in california so easily is because for years now california really has just been controlled by one party okay the two major parties in the u.s are the democrats and the republicans there are more parties than those two but i mean obviously we know when it comes to election time you know those are the two big players right those are the two that have the most money those are the two that you know are able to push their cans because of so much of the money they have you know independent or libertarians or Green Party, whatever the case is, it's tough for them to compete. Well, in California, as many of you probably know, 
the Democrats dominate California. That's why when it comes to these things, some of these extreme ideas of like raising taxes really high and things like that, they just pass right through too because so many of the voters vote Democrat. So you just, there is nothing, there's nothing to stop it. There's nothing to stop it from passing when it comes to state legislature other than maybe just you have that, you know, time where someone actually, even though they're Democrat, they might actually say, hey, this is a little too extreme. Maybe. But what happens so much in California is stuff like this. It just goes right through. And I'll even show you the voting on this, the voting in the assembly in California. There's 80 members in the California State Assembly. Um, of the 80 members, there's one independent, there's 17 Republicans, and there's 62 Democrats. That's how lopsided it is in California. That's how lopsided it is and how hard it is for anyone to stop anything when it comes to raising taxes because there's just not the votes to do it. And even the way the votes went for this bill, there were four Democrats who did not vote. All 17 Republicans voted against it. One independent voted for it and all the rest of the Democrats voted for this bill. 58 Democrats voted for these higher taxes. So every Democrat who chose to vote voted for higher taxes. The one independent voted with the Democrats to raise it and the 17 Republicans all voted against it. You can see it in the history. I'll put the links for this stuff down below. But that's really the reason why California's in this situation. is. That's really why you keep seeing things like this keep happening in California because it's pretty much a one party state that controls everything. And that's why stuff like this just goes and there's nothing to stop it. There's usually no hurdle, nothing in the way. So if there's gonna be a higher tax at some point, you can pretty much guarantee it's gonna be coming. Where the money goes, who knows, right? Who knows where the money goes? It's just money taken out of your pocket to give to the government. So guys, like I said, if you prefer to keep more of your own money, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. I appreciate you guys checking out this content here. I'll put another cool video right over here you guys can check out. That is it for this video. I'm Jacob. This is my life in Vegas.